This is Friday morning and uh, the sun is shining and things look great for Roseman because high speed uh, internet, television and phone is coming to Roseman in a big way. All three are coming with that service. And I'm out here in front of Roseman High School. And Charter is here and a subcontractor, Turnaround Communications here, and they're working on the lines. Hooking it up. On the 17th, which is next Tuesday, this service is going to be available to everybody in town. Yeah, this is Turnaround Communication. They're working here on 20th Street, right next to the First Baptist Church, and uh, getting everything hooked up for fiber. And out in front of the First Baptist Church, fiber is going on the poles, and uh, Charter Communication is wiring all of Rosemont for fiber optic, high-speed internet, TV, and phone for less than at and is charging. And who, who, puts, who puts those things up there? You do? Charter or like, uh, like uh, AT&T or no, no you? It's us, Charter. Oh, so you're putting those up there? Yes. Oh, okay. And that's slack, which means I guess slack of the... Well, that, that's like for future, if, uh, say, if, if the fiber gets cut or anything. Uh-huh. They need storage. Oh, I see. What they do, they pull those slacks. Uh huh. And so we have more fiber. Got it. If they cut it, we're screwed. Yeah. So they, if there's slack over there, slack over they pull all the slack right. together. Right. Got it, got that's it, what, got it. Got it. Now, you're going to go all the way down 20th here? Yeah. Okay, and then you can hook everybody up mm -hmm. both ways, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And you can do that for all of Roseman? Yeah. The whole city of Roseman. Like uh, how far? Well, actually, how far west? Like actually, there's there's different runs we do. Okay. There's three nodes here that are feeding this whole area right here. Oh, okay. And then the other side feeds that area. Okay. So each node feeds has its own area. It's it's, it's feeding. I see. So, I so, see. So many homes per node. Oh, okay. So here there's three. Oh. Yeah, it's just coming from one fiber feeding from Sierra and, and uh, Roseman Boulevard. And that fell everything. Uh -huh. Now it's just like it's been it's different. It's it's more fibers coming and it's like it's spread out. But like it's gonna be way faster than what and, and is this all charter? Charter. Okay, not AT&T. No, no. no. It's just gonna be charter and like it's gonna be not a high speed data and then more channels, you know, high definition television. Sure. So it's just it's absolutely different than what they had before. It was like, it's like the system was like 80 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the people can yeah. sign up after the 17th. Yeah, they can call in. You'll come to their house and hook them up. Yes, sir. That's that. pretty good, huh? November 20th here in Los Angeles at the LA Auto Show, South Hall. This is uh, in the Ford area in the West Hall. And they're offering Drive Challenge with the 2014 Ford Fusion Energy. Here they have little handouts. And in the bottom right hand corner, they have a QR code that you can scan with your iPhone. And that gives you an app to test drive Ford Energy, which is right here. The item on the right is a giant Coca-Cola bottle. Green with grass all around it. Ford and Coca-Cola have partnered to use the same type of technology that Coca-Cola is using for their bottles to use the same technology for 30% of the pieces on the new Ford Fusion. 
The Fusion is uh, rated here for 26 miles per gallon. Good evening, how are you? Um, RES is very proud to announce that our enrollment is back up to 752 students. Um, we will possibly have two more students by the end of the week. We have a family that has returned to our area and they're thinking about bringing their nieces and nephew up from Lancaster. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we'll be able to squeeze them in before the end of this calendar year. Um, we held our award assembly this month at the beginning at the, on December 2nd to recognize our November Students of the Month. We are very uh, proud to recognize our students who excel not only academically, but with their citizenship. It's something that we're working on to um, help our kids be nicer to each other. We also have such called our blue slips, which are given out to students who are caught being good. Um, so we have the um, yard supervisors, we have our paraeducators, teachers, when they're walking around, if they see a student who does something that's gone above and beyond, we want to recognize them. So they give them a blue slip and then they recognize the student of the month. Um, <coughs> an example is I was walking through campus and I dropped, I dropped a bunch of papers and this one little boy just stopped playing, ran over, helped me pick everything up, handed them to me, and then ran back and kept on playing. <laughs> and didn't give it a second thought. Wow. And then he was really surprised when he got a blue slip, and he just, you know, he just looked at me and said, well, I said, you stopped playing when you, you know, during your recess time to help me out. I said, I appreciate that. So all the other kids are like, now they're watching as I walk across the campus. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of these times, if I'm going to get tripped, and then I'm going to get blue slip for that. <laughs> but I do want to see you in my office for tripping the principal. So we're very you know, happy to recognize those kids. Um, our attendance has remained constant in spite of several bouts with the stomach flu and our cold weather conditions. I'm also very happy to report that our teachers have very good attendance. Um, I understand that usually when the weather gets cold, uh, some teachers get you know, snowed into atrophy, but our attendance rate is very, very good. It's very, very high. We've seen almost no absenteeism this winter. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed it goes all the way through the rest of the winter. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Our computer lab is progressing really well. We're working closely with Mr. Wexler and Mr. Rob Nett. Uh, today, the UPS guy pulled up and he delivered all of our chairs. We don't have our computer tables yet, but we have a lot of chairs. So step one, we're looking good. Our estimated time to open, or our grand opening, is going to be on January 20th, 2014. Um, once we finalize that date, of course, we're going to send out invitations. We're going to make a big deal about it, you know, have balloons. You know, have a ribbon cutting ceremony the whole nine yards. We want the kids really fired up about this. Um, also, our students, we continue to see a change in our office in the number of referrals. Um, compared to last year, the number of referrals or number of suspensions of kids in the office has been reduced. Um, again, I'm going to attribute that, a big part of that, to our Safe School Ambassadors, which is a program that we work with Safe I mean, with, with Safe Park, with West Park, because um, the kids are out there and they're responding and they're stepping up and they're really jumping in and it's kind of funny to hear you know, some of the kids talking to a first grader and saying, okay, when you did this, what were you thinking? How were you feeling? And you, and you have these little kids that are going, I was really mad. And you go, well, why? And it's just a really fun conversation to hear because they actually think it through. So now you have kids who are actually thinking before they throw a punch, which is a great, great thing for us to see. So we're very excited about that. Also, our state school ambassadors in conjunction again with West Park, attended a leadership conference last week. Um, and some of the comments that the kids brought back is it was weird to be taken out of their comfort zone. Um, they actually got to experience what a victim of bullying might feel like when they had no one to turn to. So they were made to feel that way and then they had the other half where now you get to go and tell somebody and you get to help you resolve that problem so you're not feeling so helpless. Um, what makes this program so good is some of the kids that we have as C-School Ambassadors were some of our tougher uh, borderline discipline problems and they never got to see it from the other side of the table for lack of a better word. So they came back and they said, wow, I, I never realized how helpless a bully felt. I mean, I mean, a victim felt when, when somebody was getting bullied, which was you know, really, really exciting to hear. Um, another comment was, you know, this taught me that everyone is different and unless you give people a chance, you could, you could be missing out on knowing people with great talents and we should never judge someone just by how they look. And that again is, was a great statement. And again, it was by a student who in previous times 
based on history, had spent a lot of time in the office, you know, having numerous conversations with administrators. So this was a great perspective, and again, it was just all brought out to this leadership uh, conference, leadership meeting, that helped our state school ambassadors not only develop their leadership skills, but they have a better understanding of what the kids who are victims or the kids who felt that they were helpless, um, how they felt, so now it gives them a better perspective when they're talking to you know, alleged bullies or victims of an incident.